Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number nine of this NHL 20 Canadian Cup Challenge with the Halifax Islanders. Just before we jump into the video, if you guys are new to the channel and haven't yet, please consider going down into this corner, clicking the icon there, and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Also, um, make sure you leave a like if you enjoy the video, and feel free to leave comments to possibly get featured. But anyways, let's jump into episode 9. So guys, last episode we were able to complete a back-to-back -back season where we had back-to-back 60-plus -back wins and back-to-back -back Stanley Cup victories. So really great start here overall for this series. Um, the team is just playing out of its mind right now. Honestly, we've got such a great group of players here that I don't want to trade guys just because it's going to negatively affect morale. But at the same time, we're going to have to just to let young guys get into the team and grow and play and fill out roles that we need them to. So right now looking at the... Um, progress reports here obviously our whole top group is pretty much guaranteed here uh, we are going to jump into some comments pretty quickly here but we got to get past a couple things first before we do so so at this point we're you know trying to figure out a couple decisions on who stays who's who stays and who goes um obviously we've got guys like landon mccallum pushing the uh nhl as well as defensemen like um duane Mallet and uh, Gilbert Mercier or uh, Dylan Gunther those guys all should be playing in our team here moving forward as they have quite a bit of potential honestly a guy like Raphael Plus probably could be on uh, in our subs as well this upcoming season but uh, yeah we're just going to kind of play it out here through the draft we're going to make some trades and we're going to try to set this team up so that it is good to go for the future but First things first, let's jump into some actual comments here because uh, these are going to determine how the video plays out. So first thing here, Jared Sorhando said, correction, Toronto has 13 cups. Yes, I think I said they had 11 and that's actually the Detroit Red Wings. So yes, I was wrong. Good catch there, Jared. Um, we had a couple suggestions here from MNTV saying this series is amazing. Maybe after you finish it, you could make another one with the same or like with the same concept, but different nationalities. So he said maybe Sweden. And then Mika Hewson said, um, maybe try Russia. That would be interesting. So, you know, we've definitely got ideas for what's going to happen after this series is finished. But right now I'm trying to just focus mainly on what's going on in this series. Um, Matt Barnes said, make a Newfoundland team in your next series. That'd be sick. I think we are going to do that for a new draft of glory after we finish our current draft of glory. Um, Data782 said, appreciate the shout out, buddy. Definitely the right move to offload Harrison. Uh, congrats on another cup. The AI was absolutely disgusting. If you have to move either Bean or Byram, uh, it may be an unpopular opinion, but I think you move Byram. In the real world, I'd take Byram all day, but Bean simulates like an animal. Um, if you have to move him, you can get a boatload for Byram. That includes a prospect or a pick that becomes your future or the future of your defense. But for now, Bean is filling that 60 plus point role in the top pairing so i i honestly kind of agree with that they're saying or data saying keep him because yeah he is putting up crazy numbers and he is going to sim like a beast for us um let's see nikita nazarov had a bunch of stuff here saying thanks for shouting out my channel i'm glad uh that there's a youtuber that pumps out this much content uh and and uh which is why you're my favorite hockey YouTuber. Keep up the great work. You've been doing crazy good on YouTube so far. So keep going and don't give up on your goals. Thanks for giving me the green light for starting a similar series like you. Um, and then there was one other comment in here that I totally agreed with from Nikita. Um, actually, there was two. He said, lol, I thought Toronto was going to put up a fight. They got bounced just like Tampa in the first round. Also, they're supposed to be your biggest rival, yet they ain't making much of a case to be comp a competitive team against you. Yeah, I agree. Our team is starting to become a dynasty here. Um, and then he also said, great playoff run. Like you said, Chicago already had their glory in glory days in the 2010s, so it's your time to shine and become a dynasty in the 2020s. By the way, you can become a dynasty by next year. It seems like Carter Hart and uh, what's his name? Um, Vasilevsky, Andre Vasilevsky are the only elite rated goalies in this game that actually simulate somewhat well based on their overalls. By the way, you should trade away Byram instead of Bean as Bean seems like a beast and in this game or in this game. Meanwhile, Byram barely puts up 30 to 40 points a year. Just my two thoughts. Okay, so from, you know, two of my biggest commenters and 
biggest channel collaborators that I have here, um, they're both saying keep being trade away Byram, even though Byram has got three years youth on uh, on Jake Bean. I mean, Jake Bean also, guys, is 89 rated right now, which is insane. Versus you look at Byram, he's only 84 rated, but he's also only 23 versus Jake Bean's already 26. So, I mean, it's a tough decision, right? But we're going to have to pay one of them. And the other guy's probably not going to be able to stick around for as long. So, looking at contracts here, um, pretty much everybody's locked up at this point. I mean, Jake Bean's honestly on a sweet deal, man. We've got him at $4 bucks for the next two seasons, which is awesome because, you know, we don't have too many guys actually expiring at this point. Um, guys more like Duclair and Stahl, you know, they're probably worth keeping. But at the same time, I want to move certain guys just to clear up space for youth, like I said. Um, and yeah, like you look at the majority of these contracts and things here that are going on. We don't have a lot of guys that are expiring like right away, right? You look at all expiring like these guys I'm not exactly worried about, right? Most of them anyways. Um, we might go out and sign Gale daily as he's looking pretty nice. Um, so yeah, I I'm going to offer some contracts here. But a guy like Eric Stahl, unless he wants way less money, see, and he wants four and a half million bucks, I'm not willing to offer him that much. Duclair is honestly got a pretty decent price there because, well, I guess he's playing third line, isn't he, right? So maybe we stick with one year and just pay him that 3.95, see how he plays in the next season. Obviously, he's 84 rated, which is pretty insane. Uh, Matthew Del Cole, see, 1.2 million bucks I can do all day. That's not a problem. Um, same with a guy like Evan Rodriguez. I know he is 31 already, and that might not be the best idea, but actually Lawson Krause has got a nice contract too. Honestly, we have a lot of guys that are taking good contracts to help this team win, and I'm going to re-sign them if they're going to be taking contracts that are this cheap and this affordable. It's like, yes, come play for our team again. You just make our team so much better depth-wise and give us options for moving players if there's injuries or anything like that, why wouldn't I sign these guys? I mean, certain guys, yeah, I think Tyler Ennis, this might be his last year as he's 35 years old now. But, you know, he's had uh, he's had a bit of a good run here with this Halifax team, especially to, you know, kind of end off his career. So we'll do a one-year deal for Tyler Ennis and kind of move on from him after this. Uh, Taylor Lear there, we're going to sign. Same with Cedric Paquette. And then I think we're going to go with, we'll definitely go with Gail Daly over a guy like Jack Quinn or even a guy like Night, Nightingale or maybe even, uh, Jerry Ryan's actually not too bad either. So yeah, we could probably sign him up. Um, did we get Chris Innes yet? No, we did not. Chris Innes I would like to sign still as he's a pretty decent defenseman. And yeah, Jack Quinn we can sign. So uh, we offer a lot of contracts, but a lot of these guys are down in the minors. Boston Billus, I don't think we're or Billus, I, I don't think we're gonna sign him. Um, but yeah, everybody except for Eric Stahl, I think we're gonna go after here for our contract extensions, and then we are going to sim to the draft. So Dauphine signs, Del Cole signs, Rodriguez signs, Ennis signs, Declair signs, Kroos signs, Paquette signs, Moran signs, Lear signs, Quenville signs, Pouliot signs, Quinn signs, Innes signs. Beautiful. All right. And obviously the two rookies that were unsigned, we obviously got there already. So there's the lottery. Montreal moves from pick two to one. Lucky them. They're going to be getting a nice uh, Canadian sniper there in Paille. And uh, St. Louis moves from seven to two. Anaheim moves from four to three. Boston, you got to feel a little bad for, but at the same time, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's pretty much all we need to know heading into this draft. Obviously, I've got a couple guys I want to target, but there aren't that many where it's really like, oh, we have to go out and get this guy. Like, yeah, some guys are pretty good in here. I I'll give them that. But overall, man, like I, I just don't think we uh, we're going to be pursuing all that many players in this draft anyways just because there aren't that many Canadian players where it's like yes I need this guy like I just I don't see that happening a lot so there's a couple low elites here like a guy like Gustavo Brain like that's quite an, a name there hey uh, Gustavo Brain we might go for him 
Um, yeah, a lot of, you know, uncertain players here really throughout this draft. So we'll take who we who we can get our hands on, but at the same time, we have a lot of later picks, and I don't see us landing all that many great prospects this draft. But, you know, I don't want to trade away too many pieces either, obviously, because our team's already in great shape. And like I said last draft too, we just don't need to pursue a ton of players at this point. So Alex Ovechkin retires, blows Gretzky's goal record out of the water. Holy. He also finished off his career with a 60 goal season. You got to give him that. Holy Calgary, like really had a great player on their hands there for a season. But my goodness, 963 goals, just 37 goals short of the thousand goal mark. That is insane. Alex Ovechkin, possibly the best goal scorer. Well, he is in this simulation anyways. He is the best goal scorer the NHL has ever seen. What a career for Alex Ovechkin. Uh, Kopitar and Kovalchuk, as well as Krejci, all break 1,000 points. Uh, Van Riemsdyk with 850. Bunch of guys with 700 plus points there. A couple guys with six, a couple guys with five. And then we get down into the defensemen who actually had pretty good careers overall too. Uh, looking at goalies... Marc-Andre Fleury retires for us, 532 wins, that is huge, I mean obviously he was a number one pick by Pittsburgh, but uh, yeah, you just gotta love, you'd love to see that man, what a career for him, as well as Rene Quick, Halak Dubnik, Reimer, and Kincaid all retiring too. So we'll see if we get Fleury as a scout or something, I don't think we will, but you never know, it's possible, and looks like Kopitar becomes a coach for LA, and a whole bunch of coaches retire. Wow, okay, that was a big list. Um, anyways, we are going to get to the draft here pretty quickly. I might try to trade one or two guys, but really we've got our picks lined up here. Jake Bean is actually so valuable to us right now. Holy. Um, yeah, so I can see why you guys are all saying like, oh, keep Bean, trade Byram. Well, Beans actually got the higher value than Bowen Byram right now, but uh, I do agree that I think we could possibly get a defenseman for him in the future. Um, we'll see what happens, because honestly, I think we can keep him for at least one more season here before contracts start to expire. But we will be focusing on potentially finding a trade for Byram as well as upping his value if we can. So we're going to jump into the entry draft. We've got a couple first round picks this year, which has not been the case over the past draft or two here, but we'll see what happens. Obviously, the draft is unpredictable as hell, and uh, we'll see if we can, you know, possibly get some wins or not. Okay, guys, so one thing I am going to try to do here is try and acquire a couple more second round picks versus our first rounders, because honestly, we don't need the first rounders that much. And I could definitely see us trying to work a deal or two here, even if it's for later round first rounders, like from Arizona there, they've got two picks. Um, if they have three, I'll go for all three. Um, doesn't look like it. Looks like Ottawa might have a couple picks available too. They got one there. And then do they have another one? Yeah, they do. Okay. So we're going to try two deals that might work out, might not. We're going to see. Um, so Ottawa has the more valuable picks. Arizona's got later round seconds. But honestly, I would take four seconds over two, two first round picks right now, just based on how the draft class is looking. So um, if we can get these two picks off of Ottawa in exchange for a first rounder, whether that be pick 20, I think it would be pick 27. So if we can do this, I'll take it. And not quite. Okay, so... Um, do they have any skaters that they want from us that aren't high end? Um, not really. That's not great. Okay. Any chance we can send them a guy like, I don't want to send Weeks anywhere because he's valuable, but maybe a guy like Webster. I could see us possibly trading Webster in this deal too. If that goes through, I'll take it. And it does. Okay. All right, so Montreal's going to make their pick here before we make another trade, and Payet is an 83-rated sniper center. That's a, that's a nice pick there for them. So we are going to try and work one more deal over here with the Arizona Coyotes as they have more second-round picks, and uh, really I'd prefer the second-rounders over the first-rounders at this point. So if we can go pick 32 in exchange for pick 62 and 64, I'll take it. And that's accepted right away. 
All right, so Bull is an 82 overall sniper as well. He goes second overall to the St. Louis Blues. That works out quite nicely. Oh, okay, and Trainer is a 83 overall playmaker who ends up going to the Anaheim Ducks. And then it kind of drops off from there as Lebedev is, you know, average. Shatan is pretty bad. And then, okay, Coletta is actually decent there. So I don't know. I guess the Florida wanted a center fifth overall, so they passed up on an elite winger. Anyways, we're going to sim over to pick number 40 and see just what exactly got drafted ahead of us here. I'm not expecting too much here, but uh, Sillinger was decent. Cox was decent. Um, Hayes was good. Um, kind of dropped off after that, to be honest. I'm kind of glad we traded away those first rounders because really we got way better value out of what we traded for. So first up, we're going to take David Venkateshin here. Um, he's probably going to be a good third line fit in the future, and I'm hoping he's at least a medium top six. So we'll see how he turns out, and he is a nice medium top six, 63 overall power forward. Looks like a really good player for the future for this team, absolutely. So we're going to simulate over to pick number 58 now. Obviously, those two Ottawa picks are going to serve us quite nicely. Uh, Whitaker was an elite goalie. I was looking at him, but we didn't take him because obviously we already got uh, Bribois who I don't really think we need to worry about too much. Um, so next up, we're going to take this goalie. We're going to take a risk on Stu Wiseman instead, see if he actually is a high elite or not. And he is a high starter. Okay, so decent potential still. Could end up being the backup to um, to Pascal Bribois. Or Brisebois. Brisebois. I, I always say it wrong. Brisebois. That's how you say it. Um, but yeah, no, Stu Wiseman, definitely a good goalie still for a mid-second round pick. Actually, he's a late second round pick. So yeah, we're going to send him over to pick 62 now. Um, I don't think anybody else is really going to go in between here. So yeah, Stu Wiseman, definitely a nice pick. All right, and we are going to go not with Holtby, even though you might think, oh, take Holtby. He's the best option on the board. Well, not in my opinion. I'm going to take a risk on Blake Reeves instead, who could be as little as a two-year ETA, but also could be as low as a low top six defender. So I'm hoping he's at least a low top four, and we'll see how he turns out. So Reeves is, yeah, okay, 60 rated, but low top four. Defensive defenseman, still, you know, a big body, good draft pick overall, and uh, yeah, not too bad. All right, and finally, we have the very last pick of round two here. Um, and we are going to be going with a guy by the name of, you could say Holtby again, but nope, we're not going with Holtby. We're going to take a risk on Gustavo Brain and see if he turns out playing for Charlottetown. I believe he's playing for Charlottetown, so hometown kind of boy. And he is a low top six playmaker, so not the greatest potentials on those guys, but, you know, half decent picks overall. So we're going to send all the way over to pick number 192 now. We'll get to see how good Holtby was here at the start of round three somewhere. And yeah, see, he wasn't the greatest pick there. So looking through, we'll see a couple other great picks in here, I'm sure. Um, a lot of medium top nine players. Not a lot else besides that. Yikes, round three was pretty bad. Okay, round four. We're going to see one medium elite in Mar, actually two, okay, a goalie named Skinner goes to the Penguins there. Um, that was it for round three, or round four, sorry, not much there. Another high starter there in S Jostrom, I believe is how you say it, Jostrom, uh, goes to the um, Panthers and is a pretty nice pick overall. Um, besides that... Not much available. Okay, there you go. Lack is a decent defender. Um, and that's that's pretty much it there. Okay, so round six. We're at the very end of round six. I'm sure there was a couple half decent picks. Yeah, Hamelinen was a pretty nice low elite, um, low starter in Saprikin. Not much, man. Like really, not much for picks. So I'm kind of glad that we didn't have too many picks here. Um, and really, I'm kind of just stuck on who we're going to take here i think we're gonna go with marty palin here again just canadian taking a risk i don't really think he's going to turn out but you never know 
And Marty Palin is probably a medium seventh. Yeah, oh, he's a low seventh. Ouch. Okay, so yeah, not a great draft pick, but honestly, at pick 192, you're not going to get a lot of great talent. All right, so we're going to sim over four picks here to Anaheim's pick that was owned by someone else. Oh, Avery May was a nice defenseman there. Yikes. Um, so next up, we're going to go with a goalie again here, I believe. Yeah, Gary Boyce, absolute shot in the dark besides the one bar medium elite potential, and he is a medium backup, again, 55 overall, so not great. So really, I'm not exactly upset with those picks. Like, I, I know they're not going to be good, but, uh, you know, they're shots in the dark, they're risks, and sometimes risks actually pay off, and that's where you really get a nice prize every once in a while. So it looks like Prince was a nice goalie. Vickers was a decent center. Um, Mathers was a decent goalie as well. Um, that's pretty much it. I think there's one more goalie. Yeah, medium starter there in Bork. All right, and finally for our last pick, we're going to take another. You know, these are just all shots in the dark. There's no other way to put it. But we're going to take Pierre Lalancet, I believe is how you say it. Pierre de Lancet, and uh, he is a low top nine, probably two way forward, I would assume. So overall, you know, the first three or four picks were pretty decent. Um, I definitely say Venkatesh and Wiseman are definitely the two picks to remember out of that draft. But besides that, you know, like it, it wasn't, it was a pretty bad draft overall, but we don't need a lot of draft picks. We can pull in one or two talents every year from the draft and be set as far as our team goes. So yeah, I'm not exactly worried that we had one pretty under underwhelming draft. All right, so um, I don't think we have too many expiring contracts in general here this season anyways. Uh, we do have Harrison O'Brien next season, so that's not great. But it's not terrible either, obviously, as, um, you know, as a 92 overall defenseman, yes, he's very good, but at the same time, I don't think he's going to be requesting more than 11 million bucks. Connor Bedard is the one that I'm kind of weary about because he's just continued to score here like crazy. He's become a franchise player out of the number two pick. And, uh, well, then we also have guys like Othman and Clark, and this is where we're, we are going to have to offload contracts, possibly, um, is because we have so many guys lined up here at the end of the 2020, or in 2026-27 that we're not going to be able to afford to pay everybody. So that's why I'm kind of just weary here right now on these contracts. So we could go with Eric Stahl for one more season. Just one, not two. I can do a $4.4 .4 million contract for him for one year. And we can hang on to pretty much everybody else as we just, like, we can keep them. We don't have to pay them a lot, right? And it's like, yes, stay with our team, please. We're doing well right now. Um, weeks, I think we're going to wait on for another season. Obviously, he put up 45 points in junior this year, which is pretty good for a 19-year-old, especially as a defensive player. That's really good. Um, and then let's see, Nightingale, I'm not going to sign. And yeah, there's just a lot of guys I'm probably not going to sign. So this is where I think it's time for Pascal Bribois, or Brisebois to come into this team, start playing backup goalie for us and uh, make it, start making an impact and start making a name for himself, really. So, yeah, he's going to be in here. Hopefully hopefully he doesn't go back to the queue for another season, um, but he might. But, hey, he's growing there still, right? Like, he, he's um, increasing the amount of wins he gets every year, and that's really good. So that's what we like to see. As long as he's got growth, I don't care where he's playing. Um, Tristan Lennox might be shooting up, but probably not, not quite yet as... Uh, you know, 41 wins in uh, in the uh, AHL is pretty solid, but uh, we'll see if that uh, affects his overall at all or not. Um, Eric Comrie is only two million bucks, so that's honestly a good deal. And then Carter Hart, even though he is considered expensive for a goalie, he's also one of the best in the league at the moment. So, yeah, we got at least one more year where we kind of got a grace period. Don't have to worry too much about players. And I think we are just going to sim through to free agency. Or, Yeah, we're going to sim through to free agency here. Maybe make a move, but I doubt it. Because, um, yeah, honestly, this team is looking nice right now. So, 
Come on, let's get to the players. So Tyler Benson resigns. Eric Stahl wanted more money. Okay, it, he he feels that there's too many centers. And then Pascal Bribois, or Brisebois is going to sign, but I think he's going back to junior for a year. So let's see if we can get Eric Stahl, because that would just make our team that much better. But at the same time, we don't really need him, because we have a young guy like... Uh, Landon McCallum coming in here who will definitely be able to fill that role as a third or fourth line center. So yeah, I think we'll I think we'll be okay. I don't think we have to worry about Eric Stahl. Even though yes, he is a very good player. And you know, I would kind of like him to retire for our team. I he can be a contract filler for one year, I think. I think. I mean he is 83 overall, but he's probably gonna start dropping off here pretty quickly. So we can pay him five million bucks for one year if that's what it's going to take to make him stay, and that's fine with me because obviously with the amount of expiring contracts we have, we can't afford to pay everybody for more than a year. So, so yeah, he is going to resign. We're going to send him to free agency here nice and quickly. Boston Billis is done here, unfortunately. One of our first ever draft picks too, but uh, same with our assistant coach there in Spiller. Okay, so. As far as the trade block goes, I do not want to trade those guys. Those are two of our more valuable depth players, but uh, Perfetti seems to have a lot of value for his contract. Jake Bean's looking nice. Lots of guys have high value on this team, which is awesome. Um, so, Bowen Byram. Not, see, he's not the best contract at $5.57 million. Um... But then again, neither are guys like Howden and Duclair. Those are pretty pricey contracts for third and fourth line players. So, And then obviously Eric Stahl's got that $5 million contract just for this season, obviously. But uh, yeah, obviously our draft picks have no value either. Um, but Breeze Bois is actually considered more valuable right now than, um, than Carter Hart. So that's interesting. Um Every goalie we've drafted plays in the CHL, obviously, so we might have to go out and sign one backup free agent goalie. I think that might honestly end up being Boston Billis, just because we don't have another goalie to back up Lennox now that, uh, oh my gosh, Crosby's available, but obviously we don't have money. Um, but no, honestly, Boston Billis would not be a dumb signing to go for just based on the fact that uh, we do need a backup goalie here still um, for the AHL. So where are those backups? Come on. He should be right in here somewhere. There he is, Boston Billis. All right. Offer him a two-year deal. Just send it. So that's the only thing we're going to do for free agency. We're going to send to the next season see how our team shapes up and uh, obviously it's going to be a very nice and uh, highly competitive team so heading into the next season 98 percent of our tickets are sold for the highlanders and they're looking nice man everybody wants to watch the highlanders play as they've got some of the most exciting and uh skillful youth talent in the league right now and um yeah, you know, none of the goals state that we have to win the cup, but obviously that is our goal moving forward here. There's no question about that, so, yeah. All right, guys, so I have to show you how the team is actually shaped up so far, but we do have to change at least two things here before this episode finishes. Um, one of those things for sure is that Landon McCallum is going to have to become like a two-way forward or something like that just because we don't have a lot of two-way forwards in this team. Yes, you could argue John Quenville should be playing over a guy like Lawson Kraus, and maybe that's true just because Kraus is a power forward versus Quenville's a two-way, and we could do that, like it would work, um, but I'd prefer to have a couple more two-way players in this team just based on the fact that they can kill penalties really well and uh, fill in those roles but overall like the team looks really nice um, I think we're going to try Bedard and Byfield together again because last time we put those guys together they put up absurd numbers 
that was when Byfield had the 103 point season. And then obviously Bedard, yeah, he had a better season. He uh, he scored 95 with Lafreniere and Barker, but man, I think he could honestly score just as many with Perfetti and Byfield because that's just how good those guys are. We're going to give a big opportunity here to Brennan Othman to see if he can really start putting pucks away or not. Obviously, his shooting category isn't his best stat, um, but that's okay because, you know, it, we have guys like Barker and Lafreniere who can shoot the puck really damn well too. Um, so yeah, I'm not exactly worried about that line at all. Uh, the only thing I am kind of worried about here is the defense, and the biggest problem with our defense is the fact that Bowen Byram is actually kind of the odd man out right now, um, because you look at our top group, you guys all want to keep Jake Bean, and it's like, well, then we're not going to get maximum value out of Bow uh, Bowen Byram if we... Uh, if we don't trade him here right away, because obviously he's not playing in a top four role in our team. We have two defenders who are NHL ready here in Gilbert Mercier and Dwayne Mallet. I want both those guys up in the NHL for this upcoming season here. And it's like, I have to play these guys in the NHL because it just doesn't make sense to keep them in the minors. And then it doesn't make sense to not play, or it doesn't make sense to play Byram in a, uh, top six role for defense either so the like the goalies are looking really good still Hart and Comrie are great I've got no problems with them we've got Brisbois and uh, Tristan Lennox in here for the minors and they're looking really good uh, for the rest of the minors you know it's not the greatest lineup but it's it's pretty good still I'm happy with it and I don't want to change too much and then for defense obviously if we move Mercier and Malay both those guys are getting called up there's no way we're not calling them up and then uh, we'll kind of just shift this whole lineup up one. And then we have, as you can see, we have guys like Hunt and uh, Innes and even Nolan Allen there who we can all sub in. Uh, so that's good because, you know, that will obviously uh, provide some strength to this lineup still. So I got to make some roster moves and then make a trade. I think we actually got to make the trade first here for Bowen Byram. So we'll see what is available there because obviously Bowen Byram is a very nice defenseman, but we just don't have space for him in this team anymore. So yeah, let's see what we can find for him. All right, Buchnevich and Ehlers. Ah, shit. Okay, neither of those are good deals. Okay, let's see what Winnipeg's got. Who's the weaker team here? Is it New York or Winnipeg? Winnipeg's considered a rebuilder. Um, so if we could get... I want a pick from them. I'd prefer a pick. Um, their pick is just about as valuable as Bowen Byram is altogether. Um, actually, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's just see. Okay, so Winnipeg's interested in Bowen Byram, but how, how much... Um, they're not how much, sorry what kind of prospects are in this upcoming draft? Because if there's more than two Canadians in the top five, I'm trading for Winnipeg's pick. There are. There's exactly two. One of them is a defenseman as well in Johnny Knights. Honestly, yeah, that top ten has got like five Canadians in it. So, yeah, yeah, that's probably worth trading for. Even if we're not getting like a top end prospect, it'll still be a good prospect possibly out of Winnipeg's pick. So let's try to get Winnipeg's pick, see what happens here. We're going to propose a trade because obviously Winnipeg is interested in Bowen Byram if they're willing to offer him a trade through the trade finder. We're just going to try to customize it a bit. So if we can get their first rounder this year along with, did I see they have, they do have Shane Wright. And he's looking nice. Jeez. Doesn't fairly fit our team though, which is fine. Um, but I'm going to need somebody back here who's got a pretty crappy contract, preferably, but only for a year as well. Um, like a guy like Mason Appleton, that's kind of what I'm looking for here. Except he's American. Shoot, I thought he was Canadian. Okay, so we can't go with Appleton. Oh, Jordy Ben, or no, that's Jamie Ben. I'll take a retiring Jamie Ben to clear up some cap space. So if we can go Jamie Ben in their first round pick... In exchange for Bowen Byram, you got a deal, man. You got a deal right there. Um, 
I think that would honestly go through. Maybe we can try a second round. Actually, they, they won't give up a first and a second, but maybe they'll give up a, a third rounder the year after. If we can grab that, that is a great deal for Byram, and I will take it all day. It's rejected. It's too far off. So let's try to drop the third, and that will go through. So we are going to move Gilbert Mercier up, and uh, Jamie Benn will probably go down to the minors, but let's, uh, let's get some roster moves done here now. So what we're going to do... You know, Mercier and Malay are going to move up. Uh, we're going to send... I'm sure Jamie Ben's on this roster right now. Yes, yeah, so we're going to send Jamie Ben down. Let's confirm that. All right, let's uh, edit some lines now. And uh, I think we're going to throw Mercier in here. Honestly, I want to change one of these two guys to a defensive defenseman just to help out with our PK a bit because that is going to be a big problem here most likely. Um, so yeah, if we change Mercier to a defensive, then we will get a plus one chemistry. And you look at Mercier, it's like, yes, he's got good defense. Yes, he's got good skating. Yes, he's got pretty decent physical. Honestly, he's a very well-rounded defenseman in general. Um, you could argue the same for Malay, even though he's actually a better skater. But he's only 189 pounds at six foot two versus Mercier is 212 pounds at six foot three, so yeah, Gilbert Mercier is definitely going to be getting the uh, he's going to be getting the honor of playing a defensive role for this team. Where do these guys fit? Okay, I guess Prokop only fits there. What about Enright? Same thing for Enright. Yikes. Okay. So I guess this pairing is going to be a combination of Hunt and Allen, I guess. Yeah, that works. Or we could go N right there. That that makes sense. Okay, so that's how we're going to play the defense. Uh, extras are going to have to change a little bit for an extra attacker. I guess I guess both our defense were uh, our extra attackers there. So instead, we'll go Kernkovic and uh, Gunther. All right, so we get the Byram deal done. That's obviously a pretty big trade overall, and it definitely sets this team up for the future for being able to win still, have a little cap space, and uh, really just perform to the best of their abilities based on players' roles. So yeah, honestly, you look at this team, you look at the players' overall ratings here, and it's like, oh my goodness, what a team we have on our hands here. Still, we got an 88-rated Brant Clark at just 22 years old. Uh, we got a lot of good players in this team. Uh, but yeah, Gilbert Mercier, we're going to change to a defensive defenseman just to, you know, it might affect his point scoring a bit, but that's okay because he's going to be playing more of a depth role for this team. And if he can play the defensive role like we need him to, then he's really going to make an impact on this team. And you look at our team overall, we've got three two-way defenders, we've got two offensive defenders, and we've got one defensive defenseman. That is like, that is perfect for power play pk all that stuff i actually want to walk you guys through that quickly here just for what we're going to do with our power play and pk um but yeah obviously this lineup's nice you can see the plus one boosts there because uh a defensive and an offensive together is the only way you get maximum chemistry in this game for defense um so let's look at the power play here i would prefer if this was on a plus three and the only way that's going to happen is if harrison o'brien's not on the power play <laughs> so we're going to have to go um, you know, instead of Brant Clark, I'm looking into either a guy like, uh, Bedard or Othman, preferably. Looks like Bedard doesn't fit so well. What about, why aren't we getting plus three here? This is kind of weird. We should be getting plus three and we're not. Okay, let's try moving Bedard down. We don't need two offensive defensemen to make this work. Come on. Who are you kidding? Okay, so instead of Howden, let's try Duclair in here. There's the plus three I was looking for. Okay. So I believe Perfetti's got better face-offs. Yeah, Perfetti does have better face-offs than just about anybody else on our team. Byfield is going to be really good for a second line, though, and if we can go Byfield... Um, Bedard and Othman maybe? Can we go with Othman? 
yeah, we can go with Othman, and then let's sub out Harrison O'Brien in exchange for, I want to say Landon McCallum. Yeah, honestly, that's really nice. Um, that's a really nice power play, my goodness. So yeah, if we can keep it like that, that's just crazy good. Um, this doesn't look as good here. Probably just based on the fact that uh, Brent Clark fits nicely there. My goodness, he really does. Okay, so let's sub O'Brien out because O'Brien just unfortunately doesn't fit our power play that well. You could try Lambos, but I doubt he'll... Yeah, he doesn't give you any boost either, so... Instead, we'll try Duclair first off. And he gives you a plus one, so there you go. That's your four-man PK. Or power play, sorry. And then for PK here, um, going to be a little bit different. But, you know, honestly, a zero rating with those guys out on the ice is just as good as a plus one with the other guys out on the ice, to be honest, so... Yeah, I think we're going to leave that, and then for this, this isn't so good. Um, preferably, we toss a guy like, um, what's his name? Preferably, we toss a guy like Quenville in here, just because he's a two-way forward, and that's a zero right away. So yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect for me. I got no complaints about that. Extras should all just be the best players on the ice, pretty much. And, yep, that's looking good for the most part, except Perfetti. That's kind of weird anyways. It's good still. It's really good. Um, let's switch Lambus and Mercier here. That just makes more sense to do that. I really like this group we have, man. This is an insanely good team, and I think that it's it's capable of winning another cup. So yeah, anyways, I think that's going to be wrapping up this episode. Um, the team is looking about as nice as it's ever been, to be honest, and uh, I really don't see us changing too much in this team anyways. Everybody fits nicely. There's a lot of good chemistry going on. Um, the only thing I could see us maybe doing, I know Eric Stahl, we want him to play, but if we could sub in a guy like Rodriguez instead, that would make more sense because he's just got like four year age difference on, uh, he's got like a four year age difference on Eric Stahl. So that just makes more sense to do. And yeah, this team is in, I think it's in the best shape it's ever been. And to be honest, we've got a great young group here. Um, Brendan Othman's become a medium elite for us, which is insane. Um, <laughs> and that this team's just looking to win again. So, yeah, that's going to be wrapping it up. If you guys are new to the channel and haven't yet, please make sure you go down below or into this corner if you're on a computer and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you also uh, drop a like if you made it to the end of this video. This team is set up to win possibly another Stanley Cup next episode. Also, make sure you uh, leave comments to possibly get featured in the upcoming episode. And also, uh, feel free to turn on notifications so you never miss one I upload. But that's going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out, and see ya!